You're not going to believe this. In a sudden twist, the FDA has reconsidered the Zepbound Manjaro terzepatide shortage. This potentially offers temporary relief to patients, to you and I, struggling to access these medications with lawsuits, supply shortages, and legal battles in full swing. The future of these life-changing treatments is still uncertain. Stick around for all the latest details because this decision impacts every one of us battling the disease of obesity. Hello, I'm Christopher Durham. Welcome to The Downsized. Before I get started, please make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our latest news updates or, of course, my wife Lorraine and I's GLP-1 adventures. If you've been following us, you know I've personally used Zepbound Manjaro and compounded terzepatide to help me lose 80 pounds. Today, we're talking about the FDA's latest decision to reconsider the status of terzepatide and its shortage, and what that potentially means for those of us relying on these medications. We've been covering this story closely over the past few weeks, so if you want all the details, be sure to check out our recent videos. We've walked through every step from the FDA's initial actions to the lawsuit filed by the Outsourcing Facilities Association, or the OFA. If you want to fully understand how these decisions impact access to these life-saving treatments, please make sure to watch each of the videos. Here's a quick recap. Back in 2022, Manjaro was placed on the FDA's drug shortage list because of skyrocketing demand for both diabetes management and off-label weight loss. In November 2023, Eli Lilly released Zepbound, the weight loss specific version of terzepatide. But the new medication did not solve the supply issues. In fact, it exacerbated them. To bridge the gap, compounded terzepatide made by specialized pharmacies, outsourcing facilities 503As and 503Bs, became an essential option. These compounded versions are legally allowed under FDA regulation during times of shortage, giving patients access to the same active ingredient at a fraction of the cost. For many of us battling the disease of obesity, compounded terzepatide was the only way to get affordable treatment, especially since insurance often covers Manjaro for diabetes, but not Zepbound for weight loss. And for many of us, it was the only way to get it because it was the only thing in stock. Lilly was simply not keeping up with demand. Our local drugstores did not have their product. Then on September 30th, 2024, the FDA removed terzepatide from the shortage list, signaling that the supply issue was resolved. With that removal, compounding pharmacies were thrown into chaos. The debate over whether they could legally produce these drugs was up in the air with both sides violently believing I could do it, I can't do it, I can do it, I can't do it, and the patient's stuck in the middle. This cut off a critical lifeline for patients who just need the medication to treat their disease. In response, the Outsourcing Facilities Association, the OFA, filed a lawsuit against the FDA on October 7th, 2024, arguing that the agency's decision to remove terzepatide from the shortage list was premature and harmful. They claimed that the FDA ignored evidence of ongoing shortages and violated the Administrative Procedure Act by issuing a substantive rule without proper public input. Late yesterday, October 11th, the FDA changed course. Judge Mark Pittman granted the FDA's unopposed motion for voluntary remand and stay, meaning the FDA will reconsider whether terzepatide should remain on the shortage list. In the court order, the FDA confirmed it will not take regulatory action against compounding pharmacies during the review period. As the filing states, defendants represent, defendants being the FDA, represent that they will not take action against plaintiffs and their members for violations of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act arising from conditions that depend on terzepatide's inclusion on the drug shortage list. The court also canceled the hearing scheduled for October 15, 2024, and the FDA and the OFA must submit a joint status report by November 21, 2024. The judge noted that by allowing the FDA to reconsider its decision, the agency can cure their own mistakes rather than wasting the court's and the party's resources. For now, compounded terzepatide remains available, which is good news for those of us fighting the disease of obesity. However, this is still a temporary solution. The FDA's final decision on whether terzepatide remains on the shortage list will determine the future availability of compounded versions. If the FDA removes it again, patients will have to rely on expensive brand name drugs like Zepbound and Manjaro with limited insurance coverage for weight loss. 
This once again gives Eli Lilly an opportunity to change their strategy, to become the hero, to become a company that we Americans, we obese love. We wholeheartedly want you to succeed, to innovate, and to be profitable. We just want you to be fair. In the face of obscene margins, in the face of obscene pricing, you have the opportunity to do the right thing to become the hero, to lower the price, to keep it in stock, and to work with the world to stop the disease of obesity. We call for you honestly to do that, and I hope you will during this time. We'll continue following this story closely and keep you updated as new developments unfold, which they certainly will. For now, compounded terzepatide remains an option, and that's an important win for those of us who need it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay in the loop, and be sure to check out our previous videos to get the whole backstory on this unfolding situation. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Christopher Durham, and we are The Downsized. <laughs>